I'm Megan Hepner, Creative Editor for Creating Keepsakes Magazine. Today let's talk about spray ink and three ways to use it on your scrapbook projects. A few things about the product itself, it is a liquid color medium and you use it to um, apply color in a spray fashion, just as the name suggests. It's available in pretty much every color of the rainbow and all of your neutrals, so you sure can um, have a wide assortment to choose from. Also, many companies on the market make spray ink, so you can find some that are just a solid color or you can even find some with a shimmer or a glimmer to them as well. When you are going to use your spray ink, a couple of pointers or helpful tips, especially with the shimmer one, you want to make sure they're really well mixed. Sometimes they're sold with a little ball, almost like your nail polish, that will mix it for you when you shake it up. If not, just use the palm of your hand as a surface and go ahead and tap the bottle to get that color mixed up. If you aren't sure if your color is mixed and ready to go, a good little tip um, to test or check is to look at the bottom of the bottle and if it's not ready, there will be a buildup of color right there, and you'll know you need to mix some more. The less you have in your bottle, this one's been used up a little bit already, the easier it will be to mix. When they're really full, you're gonna wanna do this for a little while, and make sure it's all mixed up and ready to use. With it mixed, I always suggest doing a test squirt or two first, and the reason for that is sometimes the consistency of how it comes out can be heavy, heavier than you want, or too light. So if you test it on some scrap paper, You'll know kind of the flow of the bottle and the spray, and that way you can spray your project how you want it to be. Um, and also keep in mind it is a spray, so it can fly around the, the area you're spraying, not just down the targeted area. So there are a uh, few pointers. You can just make sure everything is out of your way before you spray and have some kind of work mat beneath you. Or if you want to do a color catcher, that's a product by Clear Snap. And it's um, just a cardboard structure here. What I really enjoy about this product is that it does have this open front and these high sides so when I put my element that I'm going to color with the spray ink down here I know that everything around my table and workspace is going to be protected because this will catch the color. Uh, so that's one option to use or just make sure your photos and things are not in your way and start spraying. Um, you can just spray direct to paper, which is a really common technique, and that's what we have on our first idea for using the product. That's what Kim Jackson has done with this album. If you look here, she's almost used a spray ink as an accent element itself, because she's taken her neutral foundation paper, this lined paper, and sprayed just in this area with a yellow ink. And then with her accent cluster all around the title, the yellow pop is almost its own little accent and adds to the cluster. You can do it on an album covers. You can also just do it on the background of a cardstock or pattern paper piece and add more of an artistic look to your, your foundation and then start scrapping from there. So that's kind of your basic approach. A bonus idea that we're not really gonna talk about in depth is using your spray ink to color accents. So if you have bare chipboard, it's a really great way to add some color to those as well versus using paint or ink. It's another option for you. Um, another technique idea is to use spray ink and do some masking. It's a very easy and very popular technique to use on projects. Uh, all you need is some kind of element to act as your mask. So in this case, this is just a chipboard uh, palm tree accent from Basic Gray. And you can see how it was used right here. Kim Jackson did this layout and she just positioned the chipboard palm tree right there, applied her green spray ink removed it and you can see the, the solid or the bright white of the cardstock beneath really pops and brings your eye to this tropical corner of the layout. Do notice that with this palm tree, if you're looking at it, you can see that it kind of bows. Spray ink will warp whatever mask you're using, especially thinner things. So if you're going to create a mask from cardstock or paper, make sure it's a heavier weight because it will curl the edges and if it's too thin, you're not going to have a clean lined um, edge around the mask the way that you have with this chipboard. You can create your own mask. You can either like, if you love the intricacy of the palm trees, you could use your die cut machine and your assortment of cartridges to cut your own masks and do a similar technique, again using a heavier weight paper. Or you can use your punches and that's what Maggie Holmes did with this beautiful page. She created a grid layout and the mask was used to create the foundation of that grid. And I'll, I'll break it down so you can see it better in a moment, but you can see how it used or it really provided a space for her to add her photos and her embellishments and also even her journaling. So the mask foundation was where she started and everything just came together from there and built upon the mask. 
What you'll want to do in this case is either trim squares to an inch and a half or use an inch and a half inch square punch. And you can see Maggie has three rows of three, so you'll want nine if you're going to follow this pattern. And then take your layout foundation or your cardstock and go ahead with your squares. You can start positioning them the way this has been started here. A uh, helpful tip at this point in the process is if you have some kind of removable adhesive, put a small amount on the back of your square first and then apply it so that way you don't accidentally bump it, accidentally bump it and have all of your squares go everywhere before you get to do the masking and because you're using a removable adhesive after you've done your spraying you can easily pull them back up. So you can get your nine squares down. We have six started. Here it is with nine and the ink applied. You can do all the same size squares, which is what Maggie did, or if you want to mix it up a little bit, maybe do some smaller and some larger and have fun that way. You can do all one color of spray ink, which is what's done here with some blue. If you like the look of ombre or the color gradient, you can do some lighter blue to darker, or you can do multicolored shades. It's such a versatile product. So add your ink, pull off your mask. You can see some of them have been pulled away here. And again, that foundation and that uh, bare cardstock will shine through and you know where you're going to put your photos and accents and build your page. Spray ink uh, will last you a long time. A little bit goes a long way. It's very versatile, fun to use. It's artistic. You can get your hands dirty uh, and spray the day away.